aggregate demand. Hopefully, at this point, it's pretty intuitive to say that aggregate demand is downward sloping. Every other demand is downward sloping, so why wouldn't it be? And there are a couple of different ways to look at aggregate demand. You can say that it's the summation of all of the economy's demand curves, or you can say it is the sum total of national production. Either way, it's going to slope down. Now, how do you justify that? There are three terms that we looked at in class, it's in your vocab, that will help explain why this is the case. And different books use different terms, so I'm going to give you a couple of alternatives here. The first one is the interest rate effect. And what that tells us is that when the interest rate is high, spending tends to be low, and when the interest rate is low, spending tends to be high. So, when the interest rate is low, coinciding with inflation being low, we have a greater level of spending. When the interest rate is high, coinciding with a higher inflation rate or a rising price level, the amount of spending tends to be lower. Lower at higher levels, higher at lower levels, downward sloping aggregate demand. So that's the first one. The second one is the wealth or real balances effect. Now, wealth and income are not the same thing. Your income is money that you earn from working. Your wealth is everything that's accumulated in terms of value of all of your assets. So we're talking about wealth, we're not talking about income. When the inflation rate is low, when the price level is down, it means that all of your assets tend to be worth more because low inflation, bigger value of the dollar. Okay, when the dollar has greater purchasing power, your wealth has more real value, you tend to spend more. With a higher price level, higher inflation, it tends to devalue the dollar, which also devalues your assets. You have less wealth, you tend to spend less money. So again, spending less when the rate is higher, spending more when inflation is lower. So that also tells us that our curve is downward sloping. Now the third one gets us into some international trade issues. Okay. Net export or foreign purchases effect. Now here's how this one works. Again, talking about the relative value of a dollar compared to some other foreign currency. Let's say, for example, that the value of the dollar depreciates relative to the euro, the one we're looking at in class today. That means if the dollar is not worth as much, then American goods are also cheaper. Because imports are a substitute for domestically made goods, then if the dollar depreciates, it means other countries are going to buy more of our stuff. So depreciated dollar, they buy more American stuff, they buy more domestic stuff, in other words. That means that if the dollar depreciates, our net exports increase. If the dollar depreciates, our net exports are going to increase. If the dollar appreciates, then our stuff is relatively more expensive, people will buy less of it, our net exports decrease. All of this stuff plays into this curve. So, for the first two, I think these are a little bit easier to understand. Lower interest rate, higher spending. For the wealth effect, lower inflation, higher value of the dollar. It changes the value of your assets. If they're worth more, you spend more money. And with net exports, if we depreciate the dollar, then people end up buying more stuff.